Welcome back. It is October 19th. That's Duchess that we hear in the background. And it's Mob Vlog. Welcome back, guys. Red Wing Matt, how you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. It's cold here, but I'm doing good. Fantastic! It's starting to get a little, uh, little chillier out there, but uh, at night, right? It was thirty-eight last night, and when I opened the door this morning, it was forty-two. Man, <laughs> so, that's good I am crazy. wearing flannel shirts. <laughs> it's starting to get a little chilly, I'd say. That's for mm. certain. So today, everybody, we're talking about the hole in the wall game. So, <laughs> uh, Art Kelly, how's it going, buddy? I look forward to seeing you this weekend. Art's going to be in town. Leanne, rolling along. Homan Sanders, Catherine Guerrero, Trace, Keith Helton, Julie M, Don Chichio, Van Pasterman. Hey, everybody. Uh, it's good to see you all. Scott, Jim Magnifici, Rhonda. Everybody's here, even Street Stories. What's going on, Anthony? We have we have a new person here, I believe, from Loch Ness. Ah, Again, no, exactly. you're the second time. Yes, we've had McZag Jam before. Good to see you back, McZag. Sonny Zaro, how's, how's everybody doing? Yes, sells with dips. Carmine left. He's over there now. <laughs> oh, Red's finally getting the jokes now. So now Red's starting to get the jokes. Unbelievable. Um, so Tony Spalaccio says, damn, I... I was hoping Lying Red passed away. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not really the nicest thing to say there. Well, I don't think he'd be coming to my oh, after show. <laughs> I just blocked you for a little bit there. Um, yeah, we're having a sit down at Campos on Saturday night. So let's talk about the hole in the wall game. So the hole in the wall game was put together when Frank Collada got to town in Vegas. He was, quote, sent out by Lombardo, Joey Lombardo, to, quote, help out the little guy. And he got out here. What Frank told me, anyway, is uh, they um, got out here and uh, had dinner over at the Golden Steer. Had a steak. Tony explained to Frank what his position was, what he was going to be doing, what he's going to be doing, and uh, told him to put together a crew of guys and start shaking down the town. No, and Frank, he probably... Knowing Frank, he probably said, I can't live on that. How am I going to earn? <laughs> well, that, well, that's exactly how it went because he asked, um, uh, you know, in Chicago, there was a street tax. So, so if you put a crew of guys together, you rob a bank and you hit it for a million bucks, you get to whack that money up, right? Wrong. You got to kick the 20% up to the outfit because if the bosses, they see a bank robbery happen, million dollars and they don't have uh 20 percent of that and you're gonna want it and you gonna be dead right <laughs> or wishing you were <laughs> yeah so that's what that's what they uh that's that's what they did and uh oh i didn't like the people i was ripping off looking at me so i used to turn their freaking pictures around now <laughs> that was a real thing leo gardino supposedly frank said would say prayers while they were robbing houses and turn the people's pictures down. That's what he told me anyway. He said he didn't like the people looking at him while he was, you know, uh, robbing them. So it's kind of strange, though. Lord, forgive me for doing this. You know, <laughs> like, what but the I hell? Got I just got to. I need the money. <laughs> what? <laughs> I just got to do this, though. Please forgive me, but I got to do this. <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, 
Isn't the Golden Steer restaurant still open? You did a video on that place. I did. I stood in front of the Golden Steer one day while I was doing a video over there by uh, in Fuego and uh, talked about Circus Circus and where the jewelry store used to be because the Gold Rush jewelry store was right kind of next to that plaza that the, that the Golden Steer's in on the opposite side, on the west end of that plaza is where the, the Gold Rush jewelry store used to be. So I, I've only seen, I think, one, one or two pictures of the Gold Rush jewelry store. So um, it was good to have you on the tour, uh, Devin. Devin, it was good to have you and Amy on the tour. Thanks for coming on the tour. Um, I'm, I'm glad you, uh, you had a good time. So hope to see you again. Your book was shipped. <laughs> um, okay. So, 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 so Frank started putting the crew together and he said to Tony, he said, well, Tony, these guys got to make money. You know, it's not like you're going to put them on a payroll. And Tony said, well, tell them to start earning, which means steal, which is not what they wanted. The, the bosses did not want that to go on in town. Right, Red? No. I mean, they're no. stealing, no stealing 300,000. No 300000 a month off the top of those four casinos, Hacienda, um, Stardust, Fremont, and the... the um... Tony well, thought he could make some money on the side. Hold on. Fremont, Fremont, Hacienda, Stardust, and the Marina. Where's my brain? The Marina. Right. Which, by the way, Red, do you know the Marina is still out there on the Strip? I didn't know that. Oh, so the MGM Grand, the big Emerald City at the uh, south end of the Strip, that's where the um, that's where the marina stood, and they bought that property, the MGM, when they decided to rebuild after, you know, they had that big fire in 1981, at the, which is now Bally's. They fixed it up, closed, uh, sold to Bally's Entertainment, and then waited almost a decade before they built the Emerald City. But that was the marina, and they just took the glass off of it incorporated it into the architecture and reglassed it. So if you stay in the strip in the MGM and you're in a rink dink little room, you're in the marina, the old marina. So um, so anyhow, um, he put the crew together and they started, excuse me, they started to, uh, I think I've been grinded too. I was just telling Red. I'm like really run down right now. I mean, with all the ghost tours and daytime tours and the other stuff that I'm doing right now, I'm. You I need, need to get some rest, guy. I need to take a break. I really do. I was just like really. Um, anyway, yes, Jasmine, I do remember you and your parents, Rachel and John. They were the best neighbors ever. I swear to God, they were the best neighbors ever. Joe Colada. Hey, guys, uh, Frank would be uh, proud of this job that you're doing. Thanks thanks a bunch, Joe. Um, Joe Collada, it'd be big news coming up, possibly, that uh, with that, that script. So I'm not going to say who's reading it right now, but <laughs> I, I don't want to taint the situation, you know. Um, okay. Anyway, so the gang members that he puts together, Ernie Davino. Ernest Davino was a masseuse. He worked in a spa here in town. Frank called him a garbage thief. He uh, he was a petty thief. He'd break into the lockers when the guys were getting their rub downs, and uh, mm -hmm. and that's you know steal steal little stuff out of their lockers. That was what Ernie did. Leo Gardino. Leo was Frank's main stealing partner. They went on the first few burglaries here in town. Scored the first I don't know seventy thousand. They scored. They opened the upper crust pizzeria, and so. Um, Got to have a front to wash the money. Uh, yeah. So, yes. So, if you listen to Frank's audio books, yeah, her name was Janet, the girl uh, um, in the car that he took with him out to Vegas. Her name was Janet. She was, as he said, a freak. So, <laughs> she was a freak. He said on the way out, she was hanging her butt out the window of the car. Okay, oh, wow. the highway. Yeah, screwing with the truckers. And Frank's like, we're gonna get, you're going to get us killed. You know, we're gonna, it's cause these truck drivers are going to, you're teasing them. You can't do that, you know? So, any, anyways. So, uh, so Tony uh, told him to put the gang together. Leo Gardino was his partner. Then you had, um, now Pete Basil was part of the gang for a, for a time. And, Till Frank and him got into it over those Persian rugs. Yeah. Got into a fight in front of the upper crust. 
So there were members that came in and out of the in and out of the the hole in the wall gang. Um, I think Joey Kuzumana was one as well, who was in. Am I mistaken on that, or do you remember hearing that, Red? I don't recall. You don't? No. Okay. So I recall hearing that somewhere. Janet. That's right. Yeah, Janet was her name. Uh, the <laughs> the uh, the other members that you have were Larry Newman, Lurch. Lurch was in Statesville Penitentiary with Frank. Met him on the goon squad. They would go into the psychos' cells when they would go nuts and they restrain them. And uh, they helped the guards. Well, she weren't really liked among general general population, but uh, you know, you weren't among general population. I guess he was doing. Wasn't uh, he the guy Lurch? Wasn't he the guy or Newman that Tony said, "Don't get him mad at me because I don't want him coming after." Don't ever get mad at me. Don't send the big guy after me. They call him the big guy too. So, um, Ernie died. Ernie Davino, yes, he died. He died in uh, August fifth, twenty twenty. Fifteen days before Frank is when Ernie Davino died. Yeah, that's right. Um, I'm just going through my memory banks here. We got an A-lister reading the script over Thanksgiving. Keep your fingers crossed, everybody. There you go. That's coming from Joe. Uh, Good luck okay. to you, Joe. So so Gardino was an ex-cop informant. Slappy Maxi. I've never heard that before. Neither have uh, I. It was a cop. It was on the Hole in the Wall game. His name was Joe Blasco. He was a Metro police officer who uh, resigned after getting in some trouble, resigned from Metro and just did a, uh, just did a um, full-time hole in the wall gang member. So after he was busted at the Bertha's jewelry store robbery on 4th of July, 1981, that's when uh, he got out of jail after doing time. And he got a job down there at crazy horse Two nightclub, the gentleman's club here in town, which was interestingly enough, the guys who ran it, it's the only strip club in town, gentlemen's club, that was run by somebody from Chicago and from New York. That's I just learned that information the other day. Yeah. Yeah. Joe Collada said Leo was never a cop. Yeah, Leo wasn't a cop. I've never heard that before at all. Uh, the the uh, Blasco uh, worked over there at that crazy horse, too, until he had a heart attack, died. He was a daytime bartender. That was died. Joe Blasco, right? This is Joe Blasco, the police right. officer. He died, uh, and then the I don't know a year later, the club got raided for organized crime ties. Mm -hmm. So, funny enough, there was at one point there was an owner that owned that place, and it's had several owners. Um, that's correct, Tommy Bridges. It's on Industrial behind Circus Circus, kind of on the north side of Sahara. So it had been just down the street from the Gold Rush Jewelry Store, but it's on Industrial. And uh, it's um, uh, had an owner, and the name slips my mind, but they found him sitting in the back of the, the lot in his car, decapitated. Huh. You know what the headlines of the RJ read that next day? No. Topless club now has headless owner. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty damn clever, isn't it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so um, hit the like button, everybody. Be sure to hit the like button. Okay. Benedict yes, hit that like button. Subscribe. Benedict Mastriani. Hi, Adam. I'm the one to talk about Joey and Nick Bassa, Tony Accardo's grandfather. Did you look into that? Thanks. It's true. I haven't yet. No, I'm sorry. I haven't. Um, He's been busy, guy. I, I Guys, I've been so busy. And if you have something coming to uh, from Redna I right now, you're going to get it at the beginning of November because I'm slammed. I don't know how to describe and how to tell you guys. It's like I wake up and I start working until I fall over. And then I wake up and I start working until I fall. It's crazy right now because of the Halloween season. So it's like um, Groundhog Day for Adam. <laughs> let me tell you except something else, too, guys. Tonight, tonight, ABC, Nightline, right. airs at 1230. They're doing a shot on the barrels and the body in the barrel out at Lake Mead. And they came on the tour, I don't know, a month ago. And Dateline, uh, Nightline um, uh, did a lot of videoing, interviewed me, interviewed the casino house 
owner, interviewed Oscar Goodman, from what I understand. So it's a pretty interesting show this evening. We want so, to see. Yeah. I, I made Adam a personal bet that I want to see exactly how many minutes he gets aired on this 30 minutes, and we want to see. I can tell you this right now. I sat in front of NBC uh, for – NBC. NB, no, NBC. I sat in front of for three days with America's Got Talent. Four seconds, okay? Four <laughs> seconds. So I'm not putting much weight into this. If they show me for a few seconds, great. If they show me for a minute, wonderful. If I'm in there for four or five minutes, I'll fall over because that would be a lot, okay? <laughs> Don't That's fall over. Saying. Just lay down. <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> man. So, um, so let's get back to the, the, the gang. Let's go over the rest of the members. So we talked that uh, Lurch, Wayne Matecki, Wayne Matecki. He was the one with the beard, the glasses. Wayne Matecki was a martial arts expert and he worked for Frank at Spanky's back in Chicago. He was a doorman, a bouncer. Bouncer. He was a very, very loyal doorman bouncer. And so um, so he brought him with uh, when he got out here to Vegas. after He tried to go legit with that nightclub, that Spanky's. But he got out here. He called up Wayne. So you want to come out? And, you know, Wayne was the one that was with him when he killed Jerry Listener. So, um, yeah, October 20th. So uh, Nightline, that's tonight. Because at midnight, it becomes the 20th. And then at 12.30 a.m. is when it plays, when it airs. I think. So I could be lying. Well, it you could can check it up on YouTube and say Nightline, and it'll show you. But that's where, yeah, that's where it's, it's going to be there. So be sure to, uh, to check that out. By the way, guys, in case you don't know, um, the Mob Tour out in Vegas, it is open and it is running. Join us for the Vegas Mob Tour. Experience Sin City's dark past. Learn how Bugsy Siegel built the Flamingo. Find out who killed him and why. Hear who Jimmy Hoffa supplied money to back in the 50s. Visit the actual home used in the 1995 blockbuster movie Casino and other filming locations as well. See the real jewelry store where Frank Collada and his crew were busted. Sit in the exact spot where Frank Lefty Rosenthal's car was bombed back in 82. View never-before-seen footage of Frank Collada telling personal stories about Tony Spilatro, Joey the Clown Lombardo, and the Hole in the Wall gang. This is how serious we thought he saw. It's almost like a peach color. It was brown then. The only thing changed is the driveway. Here's an offer you can't refuse. Upgrade to the Untouchables experience. Following the tour, you'll enjoy a three-course dinner at the Tuscany Gardens, and then VIP seating for the long-running hit, The Rat Pack is Back show. Experience Vegas. The way it was meant to be. Adam here. That was the best tour I've ever been on in my Adam life. Here. And I'm here with Big Mo. If you guys remember a couple weeks ago, Big Mo got to spin the wheel, won a gun. Here's your gun, Mo. I didn't have to mail it to him. He came out here to do the Vegas mob tour. And we just finished with it. We just finished. And Mo got a shirt and he got a gun. And uh, Mo, what'd you think about the tour? Oh, the tour was excellent. I mean, it basically just codified everything that I already know. And it just that little extra uh, caveats and the stories were, were wonderful. It was great to see the actual places that were filmed inside the uh, movie casino and also places where uh, things happen like when Lefty got blown up and it's, it's what was your, what was your favorite part? Actually, I liked um, I liked Spilatro's house for some reason. Just yeah. you, you know, even though we didn't get the look in there, yeah, but we kind of kind of bring Frank back to life. Yes, when yes. we when we do Spilatro's house, Frank does the tour. He becomes the tour guide, which yeah. is really cool. So anyway, thank you so much. It's All been right. a pleasure. Hey guys, if Mo can make it out here from Clive, Iowa. You can make it out here too. See you soon. Oh, why are you showing that? I look like I'm four feet tall next to you. Thanks for doing that. The giant. Head of the giant. Everybody look like uh, like they you know the four feet tall when they stand next. I stood next to you. My head doesn't come up to your head. It's way above me. <laughs>
Oh, and I'm six man. foot. <laughs> so anyway, be sure to watch that. It's on the night line. Uh, this and evening. don't miss the tour. I'll tell you, it's the best tour I've ever been on in my life. I've been tours since I was a kid. I went to the uh, Field Museum, and um, I've been on the tour at uh, uh, the submarine over at the Museum of Natural or whatever that museum, museum is. Museum of Science and Industry. Yes, Museum of Science and Industry. I've been on their tours. I've been on the tours as a kid all the way through Disney World and everything else. Adam has the best tour. He really does. He tells you so much that you, you're you not going to find it. You, you'd have I mean, to dig for ages. It flies by. It really does. It's a it's a two-and-a-half-hour experience, but it goes by quite quickly. So the um, so back to the guys here. We're talking about uh, uh, Wayne Matecki. Wayne Matecki is the one who, who helped uh, Frank with the listener. Um, Murder. Frank went, you know, Frank went into the house, listener's house. He pulled his gun from his waistband and he shot him twice behind the ear. Listener turned around and said, "Why?" Frank said he looked Why'd at his gun like, <laughs> looked at his no, he looked at his gun like the hell have I got fucking blanks in his thing? That's exactly <laughs> what he said he thought. Okay, chased the guy through the house, unloaded the gun into him until he was out of bullets. Then tried to strangle him. Then goes to rape for a knife, and that's when Wayne Matecki comes walking in. He sees the garage door open. And he's thinking, "Oh, who do I have to kill now?" Good backup, man. Wayne Matecki, he said, what, what, are you, what are you doing in here? He said, I counted the shots outside. I was afraid you're out of bullets. I brought more. <laughs> you can't make that crap up. He was out of bullets. Unbelievable. He was choking him. Unbelievable. So, so yeah, so he reloaded the gun. And uh, correct, the half loads, Scott H., that's why the bullets weren't bouncing off of the guy's head because there wasn't enough velocity behind them. So, uh, so they were, yeah. Bounce it off the guy's head. Kind of like what happened that Ken Eto or Ito. Similar. Yeah. So the uh so that's what so that's what happened with uh Wayne Matecki. As for anything else about Wayne, I don't know. I could tell you this though. I could tell you this. I don't think I've ever said this. And it's probably different now, so it doesn't matter. Hmm. Because that was two years ago. I'm sure Google Maps updated. But we found where uh, Wayne Wayne lived. He lives in Illinois, or at least yes, he, he does. Did. I found the house. So, so I took Frank into Street View, and we went down that street, and we got to his house. Would you believe that the Street View camera was taken on Halloween? Maybe in nineteen, it was taken on Halloween, and you could see trick or treaters walking up and down the street, and then on the house where Wayne lived. There's somebody standing on the front porch holding a tray with little sticks coming out of the tray like uh, suckers, okay, for the kids. There are and probably I, those candy apples. Ah, uh, there was a whole bunch of sticks in different way coming out of the thing, but they blurred the face. But you could see the body in the hand with the sticks. And I said to Frank, I said, that's, that's Wayne Matecki standing there handing out candy to the trick-or-treaters. And Frank went... No, he said, that's not Wayne. He said, that looks like a woman. And I said to him, I said, that's Wayne's house, man. I said, that that looks like Wayne to me. I said, you know, just imagine he's a little, you know, slight, you know, but that's him. So, uh, excuse me. <laughs> Adam, you're getting sick on me. <laughs> it's crazy. I don't know how I'm going to get through th this evening. I'm, I'm serious. So anyway, that's what uh, that's what happened. Who is still alive from the gang? Big Mo. Far as I know, the only ones that Wayne are Matecki. alive is Wayne Matecki and Leo Gardino. Now, Leo Gardino, I don't know if he is or not. Leo, Frank, this is the only time that Frank ever said anything to me where he took it back. I was at his place one day and he said, I talked to Leo. He said, and I was talking to Leo um, the other day. I reached out to him. And I said, oh, yeah. I said, how'd that go? He said, eh. So the next day, I came over to his house, and Frank said, hey, he says, I got I to gotta straighten something out. I said, what's that? He said, I didn't talk to him. I said, you didn't? He said, no. He said, um, uh, Denny Griffin did. He said, Denny tracked him down and reached out to him and asked him if he wanted to 
to participate uh, in the book. If you want, well, if you want to, just just wanted to talk, just wanted to talk. That's all. And Leo said, "I told him not to bother. I don't want to talk to him." So, um, Nardo question has a question here. Uh, hey, Nardo man, Frank, hey, you have any dealings with uh, Benny Binion? Not as far as I know, no, not at all. He never mentioned that. Never even mentioned Benny Binion's name to me. So. But Benny Binion, that's a whole other subject matter. I mean, that guy's a gangster from Dallas who came to town with a couple brief uh, suitcases filled with money and bought off all the judges, all the politicians. That's going to be on your crime tour. He tried to extradite him to, uh, back to Texas for uh, murder, and he had a, a local judge block it twice. Devin Morrell, thank you so much. Again, it was great having you and Amy on board the other day, and uh, it, was, it, was, it was a wonderful time. So, um, I did mention Pete Basil. So you had Lurch. Lurch is gone. He died in um, he died in prison, and uh, from what I understand, uh, he's buried out in Potter's Field. So nobody claimed his remains. Um, was Pete Basil the same person as Duke Basil? No, Pete Basil was. Um, or was that his brother? I I don't know if he had a brother or not. I I don't know, but Pete Basil that was his name. Uh, Basil was a real thief. He, he worked with uh, Paul Piansko, and I know I know um, Frank said he worked with Piansko too. So I thought maybe. Yeah. No. And the only other one we didn't mention yet is Sal Romano. Now Sal, Sal's the reason that they all got busted at Bertha's jewelry store, and Sal Romano was no relation. Joe said, none. Okay. Uh, Sal Romano was, uh, and, and you're right, Pete is Willie Messina's son, Don Ciccio. That was, uh, that's already public knowledge. That's, we can say it. Uh, so, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the crowd, he had a knee replacement yesterday. He's in low earth orbit, strung out on Percocet. Just <laughs> to be listening. Well, Unbelievable. <laughs> I see, love what we, see what we have there? This is what we get. This is what we get. This is what the crowd does. So, <laughs> um, yes, yes, yes. That's correct, uh, Anthony. So, uh, Sal Romano was wearing a wire. I don't know what he did or what he got him in trouble that he agreed to work as an informant with the feds, but he was wearing a wire. And Frank told me, he said... Adam, he said, don't ever go against your gut. He says, your gut's never going to be wrong. He said, so don't ever go against your gut. It's never going to be wrong. He said, I knew something was wrong with Sal. He said, I told Tony something's wrong with him. Something's off. And Tony said, he's a good guy. He's fine. Use him. Use him. He's fine. That's what Frank told me. And Sal was feeding the feds all the information they needed to know about that 4th of July, 1981 and uh, they were up on top of the buildings all around the jewelry store, all because of that Sal Romano. Now, I asked Frank one day, I said, what would you do if you met Sal? Because he supposedly said that he knew where Sal was. Sal wasn't in good health. He, he was in a wheelchair, and it had something to do with a car wash somewhere in Arizona. And I said to him, where, how'd you find that out? And he said, I was on a tour one day with some people, and they said to me, that's sell and they knew him and that's where he was so but i asked him if you saw him today what would you do he said i'd probably shake his hand and thank him because i'd be dead if it wasn't for him if we good hadn't point. got Very good point would have kept going he said i would have been dead so he said i'd shake his hand pretty damn interesting yes lewis cole that was joe blasco when we talked about him so there you have it that's, You're going to love Adam's new tour. He's oh, got a new tour coming up, and oh, it's going to be the crime tour. That's going to be a lot of fun, and uh, I think that's I'm just working myself a little too hard. So I have another tour, a tour speaking of, I have to do uh, today, today. So, Red, it has been a great afternoon. We're going to end this thing now, and uh, you have a great day. I'll see you next week. And everybody, God bless. See you next week. Come See over to my around. channel if you want. I'm yeah, going to be definitely. starting in 10 minutes. Red's going to start up in 10 minutes. Have a great day. It's been fun. Mob vlog. Mm -hmm.